Mark Ruffert here and welcome to Biodiversity Shorts. Now this small area here is the perfect habitat for one of Australia's most well-known spiders, the redback spider. And there is one, and she is living directly beneath me here under this chair. This area, this is her web and it's picked up a whole lot of leaves and things like that. There are a few bugs in there and she is sitting hiding just up in the top there. Let's break out the bigger lenses and get a closer look. Let's go. This is quite a large female redback. The male redback is much smaller, only brown in colour and is seldom seen. Below her web are the various carcasses of the insects she has eaten. This is the remains of a pie dish beetle. There are also other carcasses in the other parts of her web. There is another pie dish beetle, and that looks like a lady beetle. Finally, if you didn't spot it already, that is the carcass of a small garden skink. Now these small lizards are many times larger than the redback spider. And I'd imagine it would be quite a battle for one of these spiders to overcome this small skink. However, once bitten, the redback spider's venom will quickly kill this small lizard. The venom also has the ability to dissolve the insides of the redback's prey. The redback can then consume its liquid meal at its leisure. A dry location with a ceiling and a floor is all a redback spider needs to make its specialised web. And under this old treadmill is another perfect location for a redback spider. Let's have a look. From a distance the web looks to be quite a mess, but when you get closer you can see that it is made up of many, many vertical trip lines which go from the canopy, the upper part of the web, all the way down to the ground. These fine lines are pulled tight from above and near their base, the lines are covered in a sticky residue. And you may just be able to make out right at the base some very fine pieces of web which help to capture and tangle any prey which happens to bump into these. This pie dish beetle does not stand a chance with hundreds of trip lines spread over quite a large area. And it's caught. The trip line does not have quite enough strength to lift the beetle up into the canopy. However, the vibrations the beetle is now making with its struggles will alert the redback spider to its location, and it's only a matter of time. Once lifted off the ground, the redback then proceeds to wrap the beetle in silk. This immobilizes the beetle so the spider cannot be injured by the beetle's struggles. Like most Australian wildlife, the redback spider has the reputation of being deadly. However, no one has died from a redback spider bite since 1953. There does exist an antivenom, and if you are bitten, the recommendation is to use ice to relieve the pain and go and see your doctor. Once immobilized, she can then casually search for a soft part that she can bite through and deliver her venom. In this case, the rear end will do nicely. Although her bite is deadly, it is her ability to move quickly and efficiently through her web that makes her such an efficient killer. If we look closely at the ends of her legs, you can see that she's got many, many fine hairs. And right at the tip, there are two very sharp claws which can be used to either hook onto the web so she can hang off them 
and possibly even to cut the web on either side. Here we can see her releasing her grip on the web. This is in slow motion there. And here she is holding a single thread of silk by its end. The fine hairs also provide sensory information such as how much tension is on a particular silk strand or whether there are any vibrations going through it. They can even pick up vibrations through the air. If you remember back to the start of the video, when I picked up that deck chair, I destroyed that spider's web. Now that night has fallen, that same spider is going to rebuild her web. I set up a camera and let it run so we could capture that behaviour. You will notice that she takes her time at the anchor points. These anchor points need to be strong enough to hold the tension in the snare and also have a weak point so that they pull the insect up slightly when it becomes entangled. In this case, the entire process took her about 40 minutes to complete, during which time she set about 35 trip lines. Now while she hunts, I'd like to do something a little bit different and tell an Aboriginal Australian Dreamtime story about the redback spider. This story is called Tunpultu Kari Kari, which in the Kalkadoon language means redback spider. Long, long ago, all spiders looked the same. Some were nice to the other animals and other were evil and wanted to hurt and eat them. There was one evil spider who had a magic spirit which allowed her to change into any animal she wanted. She would change and trick other animals into being her friend by being nice to them. Once she had gained their trust and the animals had their backs turned, she would transform back into the evil spider, then trap and eat them. One day a very clever kangaroo was drinking from a waterhole when he was approached by another kangaroo who wanted to be his friend. He was wary of the friendly kangaroo as he had not seen her before so he pretended to trust her and they had a long talk together. Eventually the clever kangaroo said, I'm so thirsty after our long talk and need another drink from the waterhole. He turned and bent down pretending to take a drink, all the while watching the friendly kangaroo in the reflection of the water. He saw her begin to change into the evil spider and quickly turned around and with both feet kicked her with all his strength. She went flying through the air and smashed into a red ochre cliff face. The impact was so great that the evil spider spirit was knocked from her body, never to return. To this day, she still has the markings from the red ochre. She still eats anyone who enters her web and everyone knows she is evil by the red markings on her back. Lastly, I would like to share with you some even closer shots of our female redback spider. Now look carefully at her red markings on her back. Did you see them move? Now what you are seeing is the spider has an exoskeleton and most of it is covered in a dark pigment, which is why she appears black. But where her red markings are, what you are looking at is a distinct lack of pigment and you are looking through her exoskeleton inside to her living body and that gives her markings such a rich red colour. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then please visit my YouTube channel or visit biodiversityshorts.com. If you would like to support my work, more information can be found at the link below. My name is Mark Griffith and I will catch you next time. Cheers.